Hey, well, hey guys, hi, it is Brent Abel here at webtennis.com and goldballhunting.com. Hoping you are having a spectacular day so far, wherever you are, as you uh, watch this short video that I've got for you. And uh, today's episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast, Jeff and I talked about kind of that threshold between, and we're talking specifically about the backhand volley, where um, you're a little bit too passive as opposed to being too aggressive. And I remember when I first went to Tom Stowe, my backhand volley was absolutely pathetic. I mean, it was just, the contact point was way out in front and uh, there was just kind of a doink. There was just, just no underspin, no skid over there, no accuracy, just kind of a little a little puff block that would sit up for the opponent, whether singles or doubles. So uh, Mr. Stowe actually gave me the keys to the kingdom on the backhand volley. So much so that I kind of felt like, well, let's take some real liberties here and start being super aggressive. And and so um, what happened to me is is I, I got super aggressive, but and it just kind of leaked itself into the rest of my game, right? Because I sort of all, all of a sudden had this new toy with this backhand volley. I was going after it, and for a while, because it had been so bad before, anything would have been an upgrade. And uh, so I started, you know, actually winning a lot of points. Uh, it was very effective. But then I got, as I said, just just you know, a minute ago, I got too aggressive with it, right? I started thinking, well, I want to really inflict some pain over there. And it leaked into the rest of my game where I tried to inflict pain. Like any ball that I saw was like, well, I ought to be able to do some major damage with this. And once I got into that where I got over aggressive with, with uh, not shot choice, but just shot execution, is uh, started making a lot of unforced errors and just losing too many matches by doing that. So eventually I kind of came back to, oh, I got to find that threshold, right? Where it's not what it used to be, way too passive, but it's not what it is now, which is way too aggressive. And most of that was kind of what Jeff talks about now. A lot, one of his key phrases, one of his key coaching uh, things is, you got to let them touch the ball. It's okay if they touch the ball. And uh, because what, what, what I discovered with Mr. Stowe is, is when we worked on the backhand volley, we worked on the forehand approach, um, as I talked about yesterday in a video, with the forehand approach was that as, as long as you're making it on a consistent basis and you are, you are forcing that, that opponent to have to pass you, whether it's an approach, whether it's a backhand volley, whatever it is, um, if you're forcing them over and over and over again to have to pass you, well, what happens is, yeah, eventually sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. And the big epiphany for me was when I was working with Tom, with Mr. Stowe, and I was with this group of three of the top players in NorCal at the time. I was like, you know, uh, you know, 382. I think that's the number I've been using lately. I was like 382 in NorCal. And here was Doug King, Steve Stefanke, and John Hubble. They were on the top five. And Mr. Stowe would would work with me on something, and then and then we'd use it, kind of deploy this new thing, you know, forehand approach or backhand volley against these guys. And you know, to my shock, all I had to do was just not not you know I had to do more than just be passive with it. I actually had to give it a little bit of a ride, but I also had the mindset like you know what it's okay if they if they touch the ball over there. And and sure enough, what I what I what I discovered was. If it's just at that right threshold, not just pushing it over there, but not thinking I got to hit it so it's an outright winner every time, what I found was I started winning a lot more uh, points. So Jeff and I really kind of got into that on uh, today's episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast, which is uh, episode number 264. And um, next week, see, next week is the week of October 7th, Monday, October 7th. We've got a whole week where we're going to really be doing a lot of coaching and teaching. And we got three secrets that we want to share with you about the backhand volley. Um, and we've got a course that we've got coming out next Thursday, which is a week from yesterday. I know, it's kind of confusing. That's going to be the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Is that the 11th? 7th, 8th, 9th? I guess it's the 10th. October 10th, we've got a new course coming out uh, on the backhand volley that we, that we really want you guys to check out. But until then, we're going to be talking a lot about the backhand volley and would love to hear from you. What challenges do you have with either technique or with tactics, um, maybe just the mindset, whatever it is, um, with the backhand volley? would love to read and make sure that 
in this course that we've got coming out next week that it, it that you know we're, we're we're answering those questions for you you know whatever is your big number one question about the backhand volley let us know down below in the comment section you know depending on wherever you are it could be at facebook could be at youtube um let us know so guys that's kind of it for me today uh, a little short five minute video five minute 22 23 24 seconds um, beautiful day here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I had a nice hike this morning with my wife, Mai, and uh, our big dog, Bubba, uh, the 190-pound Mastiff. Big fella, big boy. Um, anyway, so guys, uh, again, would love to read and respond to your comments down below. As always, come on now. You got to get out there today. Help someone else have a great day. Let's do this again tomorrow.